Okay, good afternoon students. Today I am going to deal a new subject that is infection control and uh, you all students uh, as nursing as nurse nurses we should know what is infection and what is uh, how we are going to overcome the infection how we are going to uh, treat the infected patients and all in our hospital settings so the general objective of our uh, theme is to reduce the risk of infection infectious agents among and between the patients and healthcare personnel and the specific objective is to prevent or control the spread of infections in healthcare facilities and in community that is the specific objective of the ma main theme infection control before that we should know what is infection and what are the microorganisms in our body and surrounding our body so coming to the introduction microorganisms is necessary for our body functions for our uh, normal body mechanisms and some microorganisms produce food and they maintain the normal ecosystem of our body some microorganisms are capable of producing diseases or illness to the patient so in simple my infection means it occurs when a disease causing organism enters our body to and starts to multiply when they come in contact with favorable situation or favorable environment next is the infection that is some etiological factors or some uh, leading causes is infection is the leading cause of death in our country and for example a cold is coming for a person that is for ex an example of infection cold is not a disease or fever is not a disease that is an a symptom of a infection so infection is the process of bacteria or viruses invading the body or making someone ill or diseased for example is a virus virus is an example for infection the microorganisms surrounding our body are protozoa bacteria viruses etc so infection may be generalized or local and spread throughout the body so next uh, before starting the topic uh, we should know some key words that are infection that means it is the lodgement or the multiplication lodgement or multiplication of microorganisms in the body next term is asepsis it is the freedom of infection or prevention of contact with microbes and cross infection or in other words we can tell it as hospital acquired infection or nosocomial infection in hospital setup we will tell it as nosocomial infection that means it is a transfer of new infection from another host or external environment that means when we are admitting in a hospital for some infection for some infection uh, that patient is getting another infection other than this type of infection that is called hospital acquired infection or nosocomial infection next we will move on to a new topic that is chain of infection that means the micro microorganism enter into our body and how it will act in our body and how we are coming uh, disease like person so first that is the definition of chain of infection is chain of infection is a process of infection that begins when an agent leaves its reservoir or through portal of exit and is conveyed by mode of transmission that enters through an appropriate portal of entry to infect a susceptible host or in other words we can tell as chain of infection is a process in which a favorable condition is required for microorganism to spread or transfer from a reservoir to a special host here we can we came across different terms that is reservoir susceptible host etc this all things we will generalize when we come to a uh, cycle that is chain of infection before that we should know what is the definition that is chain of infection is the process of in which a favorable condition is required for microorganism microorganism may be bacteria virus or any other protozoa so the favorable the, we are providing a favorable can in environment for microorganism to spread or transfer from a reservoir to the susceptible host this also is a definition in chain of infection we are it contains six components that is included in this slide the six components involved in the transmission of microorganisms are illustrated and described as a chain of infection all these six components should be present to transmit an infectious disease from one human or animal to a susceptible host so this all six components will be included for producing an infection otherwise it will not be coming as an infection to a person or a patient next this is the 
chain of infection that is in a diagrammatic way that is the chain of infection. The first one is causative agent that is causative agent it includes the microorganisms like bacteria, virus, fungi and protozoa that the microorganism which is capable of causing disease. Next one is the reservoir. The second component in the chain of infection is reservoir that is environment, humans and animals. It can be environment, humans and animals. And the third one is the uh, third component in the chain of infection is portal of exit that is excretions, secretions, skin and droplets of a person. And the next component is mode of transmission that is direct contact, indirect contact. It can be hands, droplets or any food items. And the next one is portal of entry that is the fifth point of the chain of infection or component of chain of infection that is the portal of entry. It can be through respiratory tract, gastrointestinal tract, broken skin and genitourinary tract. And the last component in the chain of infection that is susceptible host that means the, to overcome the normal defenses, invasive devices and immunocompromised compromised host. These are some of the components in the chain of infection. Once again I will tell that is the first component of the chain of infection is causative agent. It includes microorganisms like bacteria, virus, fungi and protozoa and the microorganisms which are capable of causing disease that is the examples are microorganisms examples are bacteria, virus and fungi and the reservoir, the reservoir that means this microorganism how it will transfer from microorganism enter into the body that is through environment, humans and through animals and the portal of exit that is through the way the uh, how they will enter into the body that is the way of the way that is portal of exit that is excretion, secretion, skin and droplet and mode of transmission through direct and indirect that means through droplets, hands etc. And portal of entry is through different tracts like respiratory tract, genitourinary tract, gastrointestinal tract etc. And through broken skin also. And susceptible host is the overcome, how we will overcome the normal defenses, invasive devices and immunocompromised host. This is the six vital components in the chain of infection. So, first one is the, we can detail see well, first one is the that is the causative agent. Causative agent as I have to, already told causative agents means that microorganisms which are capable of producing diseases like bacteria, virus, fungi and protozoa. So, the causative agent for infection is any microorganism capable of producing diseases or microorganism responsible for infectious diseases include bacteria, virus, fungi and protozoa. This is called simply causative agent. And the next sometimes microorganisms are part of patients on body, flora, etc. Some, uh, usually in our body we are having some microorganism inside our body that is not problematic in our body and if the microorganisms are making some problems in our body we will be having some symptoms signs and symptoms like a, uh, a broken skin or a redness or tenderness or uh, irritation cold cough etc these are some of the infection producing microorganisms that is uh, Sometimes the microorganisms are part of patients on body, flora and can cause infection in the immunocompromised host. These infections are called endogenous infection and the second type of uh, infection is exogenous infection that means infections which are acquired from the external sources. The, the infections which are coming from the external sources that is from the external environment that is called exogenous infection. So there are two types of infections endogenous and exogenous. Endogenous means the inside our, inside our body we are having some uh, mechanisms and any problem inside our body it is causing that infection and the second one is exogenous infection that is infection which are acquired from the external sources. Second component in our chain of infection is reservoir. A reservoir is the second link in the chain of infection. So a reservoir is the place where the agent survives, grows and multiplies like in human or environment. It can be in human or it can be in environment. Also a reservoir is the place where the agent survives, grows and multiplies. For example, pseudomonas survive and multiply in nebulizers and the hepatitis B virus survives but does not multiply in the surface of hemodialysis machines. So this is the second component in the chain of infection. And the third one is portal of exit. Portal of exit is the path by which an infectious agent leaves its reservoir. So here in the 
microorganisms which enters in the body leaves its reservoir is called portal of exit and this portal is the site where the microorganisms grows here is the microorganism which is growing common portals of exit associated with human reservoirs include respiratory genito urinary gastrointestinal tract skin mucous membrane and placenta these are some of the examples for portal of exit once more uh, the examples for portal of exits are respiratory genito urinary gastrointestinal tract skin and mucous membrane and also placenta and the fourth one is mode of transmission that is mode of transmission it includes droplets etc so the microorganism can be acquired by contact transmission droplet transmission airborne transmission ingestion inoculation transplantal transmission etc so these are the pathways in which the mode of transmission enters first one is contact transmission it can be direct or indirect and droplet transmission is through inhalation through respiratory tract then airborne transmission ingestion inoculation and transplantal transmission that means microbes may cross placenta from mother to fetus some microorganisms use more than one transmission route to get from the reservoir to a new host next fourth one is the mode of transmission uh, direct contact how the direct contact will occur that is direct contact it refers to person to person spread of microorganism through actual physical contact through actual physical contact by giving shake hands or by kissing or hugging or giving or uh, uh, talking in between that is direct contact that means it refers to a person to person spread of microorganism through actual physical contact and indirect contact is through occurs when a susceptible person comes in contact with a contaminated object here see uh, this is a hospital setup and when a person or susceptible person is touching some uh, instruments or any other surroundings in the hospital settings from there the person is getting infection that is through indirect contact in healthcare settings virtually any item could be contaminated with certain microorganism examples endoscopes respiratory equipment etc through cleaning disinfection and sterilization are essential in the healthcare that's why we are telling in healthcare settings or in every setup cleaning and disinfection is very very important otherwise the in, we are spreading the infection to many of the uh, healthcare personals or we are spreading the infection to other people also next is the droplet transmission next mode of transmission is droplet transmission it results from contact with contaminated respiratory secretions you all know droplet transmission that means from droplets droplets from mouth from our uh, nose etc we are droplets are coming through that we are getting infection that is droplet transmission a person with a droplet spread infection cough sneezes or talks releasing infected secretions that spread through the air to the oral or nasal mucous membranes of a person nearby that is called droplet transmission and uh, these are some of the key terms key uh, points to be noted in droplet transmission that is microbes in mucus droplets can travel up to about 1 one meter and droplets don't remain suspended in the air but settle on surfaces examples of the disease spread by droplets include influenza whooping cough etc these are some of the key terms that you should know uh, you should come across the topics and you should know also and droplet transmission that is it results with the contact with contaminated respiratory secretions like coughing sneezing or any other talking or releasing uh, infected secretions etc through that we are getting infection that is droplet transmission and airborne transmission is through air that infection we are getting from the air that is airborne transmission it occurs when microbial particles or dust particles containing pathogens remain suspended in the air for a prolonged period and then are spread widely by air currents and inhale that is airborne transmission the tiny particles remain suspended in the air for several hours and may cause infection when a susceptible person inhales them for example the airborne transmission is pulmonary tuberculosis simply we can tell it as tb and measles these are the two examples for airborne transmission that means the infection which are spreading through airborne method occurs when microbial particles or dust particles containing pathogens remain suspended in the air for a long period of time and then are spread widely by the air currents and inhaled 
Next fifth component that is the uh, fifth component is portal of entry that is portal of entry for tuberculosis and diphtheria is through respiratory tract. I told portal of entry that is the tract which we the microorganism are entering that is portal of entry here uh, the tuberculosis, diphtheria and other diseases like salmonella for salmonella the Res, uh, portal of entry is gastrointestinal tract same like for uh, respiratory diseases like uh, respiratory tract diseases uh, the portal of entry or tuberculosis diphtheria the portal of entry is respiratory tract same like hepatitis b hepatitis c and human immunodeficiency virus that is hiv enter through the bloodstream or any other body fluids these are the some examples of portal of entry and the last one is the susceptible host last component in the uh, chain of infection that is susceptible host. The final link in the chain of infection is susceptible host. Susceptible host means it is a person who can become infected by the infectious agent. That means the person who is getting infectious infection from an infectious agent is called a susceptible host. And the susceptible host may be patients, healthcare personnel, visitors from the community or any other bystanders in the hospital can be a susceptible host. So, these are the six main components we come across the in the chain of infection that first one we have discussed is the causative agent and the last one is the susceptible host and there are some risk factors in the susceptible host also they are the very young because their immune system the very young people that means young people they are more big more susceptible because their immune system does not fully develop until about age of six months and the very old because the age is associated with declining immune system. So, very young and very old are more susceptible for getting susceptible host. And next is the poor nutritional status and socio-economic background, open wounds and invasive procedures, suppressed immune system, weakened health condition, presence of illness and injury, presence of infectious microorganism and number of infectious microorganisms. These are some of the risk factors for susceptible host, very young, very old, poor nutritional and poor socioeconomic background, open wounds and any other invasive procedures or diagnostic procedures, suppressed immune system, weakened health condition, presence of illness and injury, presence of any infectious microorganism and number of infectious microorganisms. And in hospitalized patients are more prone to develop infections. You all know when we are admitting in a hospital, we are more prone to get an infection like uh, surgery, invasive procedures and devices, immunosuppressive drugs, organ transplants, etc. Microorganisms flourish in healthcare settings and with breaks in infection control procedures and practices. Patients weakened defense mechanism also helps set the stage for nosocomial infection. Next we will move on to the signs and symptoms. You all know the signs and symptoms that is the I already told in uh, before starting the signs and symptoms we can occur in different areas or different systems of our body like the, the patient will be or the person will be developing cough, cold or any other uh, symptoms like any other redness or uh, headache or any uh, urinary discomfort or urinary problems or swelling or any inflammation, pain. These are some of the infectious signs and symptoms of infection in skin. We can see inflammation, pain, swelling, heat, etc. And respiratory tract, increased respiratory secretions, cough, etc. And in urinary tract, pain, frequency and urgency. Central nervous system or CNS system, we can see confusion, drowsiness, stiff neck and headache. And in gastrointestinal tract, abdominal pain, vomiting and diarrhea. These are some of the signs and symptoms we can see in our different parts or different systems of our body in skin, respiratory tract, urinary urinary tract, central nervous system and gastrointestinal tract. So till now we have seen about the what is infection, what is infection control, how we can prevent or how we can stop the prevention of infection and what is how a infection occur in a person. That is the chain of infection we have seen that is in chain of infection we have six components. First one is causative agent, causative agent that is a uh, 
disease occurring uh, like bacteria, virus, fungi and protozoa, second one is reservoir, third one is portal of exit, mode of transmission, fourth one is mode of transmission, fifth one is portal of exit that is through different tracks in our body. The microorganism will enter into different end our body through different tracks and sixth one is sus susceptible host and there are some risk factors for susceptible host also. So, uh, so we have to study the, about the causative agent and how a disease occur in our body and some signs and symptoms also we have seen that is in different parts or different systems of our body, skin, respiratory tract, urinary tract, central nervous system, gastrointestinal tract, etc. So, uh, there are rest of the topics remaining and uh, we can conclude here and then in the next class we can study, study nicely and come. Okay.